Now we'll have a look at interconnection criteria. So if you want to set up a PV system, connect your PV modules in series and the PV strings in parallel, then you add your router. You have to fulfill several criteria. We have uh, already discussed and we've talked about uh, the inverters. Um, so, of course, it depends on your, the situation on your roof or of your ground mount the PV system. What is the length of your strings? How many strings can you interconnect in parallel? Um, and, of course, then you have to decide what is the best inverter for this interconnection. And um, first, let's start with um, a typical data sheet of uh, PV module. So what you can see here in this table are the values you can find on a data sheet of a PV module. This is an example of a monocrystalline PV module. So what you can see is first the most important parameters, the nominal power, nominal voltage and nominal current under standard testing conditions. So you remember STC is the 100,000 watts per square meter irradiance. Uh, we have a module temperature of 25 degrees and an air mass of 1.5. And under these conditions, what do we have? We have the MPP power of 300 watt peak with the nominal voltage UMPP of 30 volts and an IMPP, of course, of 10 amperes. Then what you also need, of course, is the open circuit voltage UOC of 40 volts and the short circuit current uh, ISC of uh, 11 amperes. Then, uh, under uh, the estimation that uh, the, the area of our module has, uh, is 1.5 square meters, what we get is an efficiency of 20%. So, if you like, just uh, quickly break, make a quick break of this uh, video and check if this efficiency is correct. What we also, of course, need to know is what is the maximum system voltage of the modules. Uh, this is typically 1000 volts. So, if the voltage of your module string exceeds this upper limit, you might break your module. So you have to keep this in mind. Uh, typically, this value isn't that critical. And as well, the, the inverters has a similar level of the maximum system voltage. But keep this value in mind that you don't exceed this limit. What we also have are some parameters under uh, NOCT, so the nominal operating cell temperature. Let's introduce this OC, NOCT, so nominal operating cell temperature. So the the problem is that the standard testing conditions we are using typically to define the nominal power um, that is not occurring um, under typical uh, conditions that are more or less lab conditions. So if you have an irradiance of 1000 watts per square meter, you don't have a module temperature of 25 degrees Celsius. So these values you can find here on the right hand side marked with this uh, 800 in the index um, are the uh, nominal operating cell temperatures or under nominal operating cell temperatures. So what do we have uh, under these conditions? We have an irradiance, irradiance of 800 watts per square meter. Um, then we, we are talking about an air temperature, not the module temperature, but the air temperature of uh, 25 degrees temperature of 20 degrees Celsius, not 25. We have wind velocity, so that is not considered under STC, so wind velocity of one meter per second, and it's an open backside uh, mounting of the module, so the mounting uh, open backside this means that the wind can cool the backside of the modules and that cools, of course, the, uh, the cells of, the, of our module. And this is very important. Uh, under these typical nominal conditions, we get different values, of course, for the power, for the voltage. On the one hand, we have a drop of irradiance that drops, of course, uh, the current. Um, and the different temperature from our STC module temperature 
uh, gives us different values for uh, for the voltage and the power as well as the module of course highly depends on the cell temperature the warmer the module gets the less efficient our modules and the less the voltage and the power um, is finally what we have are the temperature coefficients for the power for the short circuit current and the open circuit voltage so these three values give us the information how the power the current and the voltage change in case of an increasing or decreasing module temperature regarding the stc module temperature of 25 degrees celsius so what you can see here for example this temperature coefficient for the open circuit voltage shows you that an increase of the temperature per degree celsius or per kelvin reduces the voltage by uh, minus 0.34 percent um, on the other hand if the cell temperature is lower than the stc temperature the voltage would increase that the meaning of this uh, minus sign of uh, the temperature coefficient and all these values are needed uh, for the decision how to interconnect our pv modules um, and connect our inverter uh, what we uh, first want to do is uh, let's have a quick look at the situation what is the area requirement we have for a pv system you see on the right hand side uh, two different um, situations on the one hand we have the rooftop uh, installed system so these are the systems mounted in parallel to the roof on the other hand we have this ground mounted system here on the right hand side so the pv modules are uh, installed on a tilted substructure um, and of course the both cases have a different area requirement um, first question is where does the um, area requirement come from so keep in mind the efficiency of a, of a pv module is defined as the mpp power over the irradiance at uh, 1000 watts per square meter or one kilowatt per square meter times the area of our pv module and this gives us uh, the the space or the area we we, we need uh, on a roof this is a over p so the specific area per kilowatt is one over eater and then of course unit cubic meters over kilowatt so if we know the efficiency of our module we can derive the specific area we need on a roof so under these conditions and installation in parallel to our roof and um, so for example if we have our module with an efficiency of 20 percent and an mpp power of 300 watt peak what do we get or so what is the specific specific area a over p mpp that is five square meters per kilowatt peak so in this case with a module uh, with an efficiency of 20 percent we need five square meters of area uh, to install one kilowatt uh, peak capacity if the efficiency is smaller then of course this value will, will rise if the efficiency will increase and that's uh, the, the pathway we are on with the uh, more modern modules this space requirement will will decrease that is also of course just valid for this situation that we have these modules installed in parallel if we install the modules uh, on on the ground and uh, we have to consider this distance due to shading so we have this tilted stop substructure and what we get is we get an, an shadow uh, from the from the different rows so we have here the first module row and then there will be a shadow um, in particular on, in the evening or in the morning in winter time for example then of course the upper side of the module will cover the bottom part of the module of the of the next row and then of course you need a distance to reduce this losses due to row shading and uh, this uh, gives us for the ground mounted or the flat roof mounted uh, pv system 
Uh, the typical required area required area is um, say over P M B P. So the specific required area is about twenty square meters per kilowatt peak, more or less. So about twenty square meters per kilowatt peak. So if you want to install one kilowatt peak of uh, of capacity. Uh, with your ground motor PV system here on the right hand side uh, you need uh, at least 20 square meters of, of uh, area uh, in order to, to get rid of um, uh, these the row shadows or that you can reduce the influence of these row shadows and uh, reduce the yield losses by the sh uh, shadows uh, you can see here on the lower right hand side this uh, uh, this shadow from the front row uh, covering the back row uh, in case of a lower uh, elevation angle of the sun. Of course, also this, this volume might decrease in case of uh, higher efficient modules. If the efficiency is smaller, then this volume might decrease. And of course, it depends on the distance between the module rows. So what are the criteria for an interconnecting check of a PV system? Remember, we have talked about uh, the operational range of an inverter and we can derive from this figure the different criteria. So first uh, is about the maximum power, so the total power, so the total DC power of our modules must be smaller than the maximum power of the inverter. Of the inverter. Then the second criteria uh, is that we have this maximum current uh, of the inverter. So the maximum DC current which can occur. This is of course regarding the uh, let's add this ISC. This must be smaller than the maximum current of the inverter. Uh, then we have the maximum DC voltage which can occur. Uh, so that's of course on the one end UOC and at minus 10 degrees Celsius. So uh, again keep in mind if we have a lower a module temperature than under STC conditions, the voltage will, in will increase. And the criteria uh, you have to consider is that okay, you can see this here in this in this figure in the with, with the, the orange curve shows you the situation. We have an uh, installation of 1,000 watts per square meter, but a cell temperature of minus 10 degrees Celsius, and that of course leads to an increase of the voltage. The green curve is uh, the CIV curve under uh, standard testing conditions, but under the uh, conditions that might occur uh, under specific circumstances, we have this uh, this irradi irradiance, but this very low uh, module or cell temperature. This increases the voltage, and this voltage must be still be smaller than the maximum voltage of our inverter. So that's uh, the criterion we have to consider: maximum voltage. Of the inverter, and then what we need to check is is um, are our MPP uh, points do they lie within the MPP control range of the inverter? So you see here this uh, yellow marked uh, area that's the uh, minimum and maximum MPP voltage uh, the inverter can handle to identify the MPP on our IV curve of the PV modules, and we have to check uh, that the MPP uh, lies within this control range. So, uh, criterion number four is uh, the MPP voltage of our PV modules at 25 degrees Celsius, so that under uh, STC conditions uh, must be uh, within uh, MPP voltage range. Of the inverter, then we have uh, the same situation for so the MPP voltage 
at on the one hand minus 10 degrees Celsius. We we, we check this uh, must again be within the MPP voltage range. Criterium six is on the other hand the MPP voltage at plus 70 degrees Celsius. That must also be within the MPP voltage range of our inverter. And finally, what you uh, can check and uh, to, to get a perfect system is what is uh, what the MPP voltage of our modules at plus 30 degrees Celsius, but just 100 watts per square meter. So keep in mind that gives us a different slope of our IV curve. You see here this uh, red curve. 100 watts per square meter radians and module temperature of plus 30 degrees Celsius. We get different uh, slope of the of the IV curve, different voltage, different current, and again this MPP voltage should be within the MPP voltage range of our inverter. Uh, and if we can fulfill all these seven criteria, then everything is fine. Of course. Um, Let's mark the important ones. Uh, this one is important one, and the first one, the second one, of course, and the th third one, because if you um, does not, if you, if your PV system is not um, fulfilling these upper limits, this maximum criteria, then you might break your uh, inverter or damage your inverter. Um, of course, uh, there is a small bandwidth, uh, but it. You, you should consider that the these three, three criteria are fulfilled. Then, of course, these criteria should also be fulfilled that the MPP voltage fits under SDC conditions. Um, you should check criterion number five and six. And what you can do is check number seven or criterion number seven uh, if you're able uh, and if you have the, the information uh, about the IV curve at 100 watts per square meter. And then you can derive the MPP voltage. So here this spot. Um, but if you can't get the information, um, you do not need to check criterion number seven. But check all the other six criteria uh, to to be sure that the interconnection of your PV module fits to your inverter. Let's make an example with the PV system. Uh, we, we take the modules we have seen in the top. Uh, with these values over there with the normal voltage of 30 volts and uh, IMPP of 10 amperes and uh, now let's interconnect them uh, for example so PV system let's take uh, 12 modules per string and say let's say we take two strings can mount this uh, on our roof. Uh, what we need, of course, is some information about the inverter. So, what are the parameters of the inverter? Let's say the maximum power, DC power is 8 kilowatts. Uh, we have a maximum voltage of our inverter that is 1000. Volts. We have an IMAX, so maximum current of let's say 25 amperes, and we have an MPP MPP range of uh, 250 volts up to 800 volts. And now let's let's check if uh, our PV system with 12 modules per string. So in total we have uh, 24 modules, 12 modules per string and two strings. And uh, does this system fit to the inverter with the module parameters we've seen at the top? Um, and now let's go step by step through our system. For, so first criterion is the maximum power. Maximum power. So what do we have on the one hand? Our module has an MPP MPP power of a nominal power of 300 watts. We have 24 modules, so that gives us a total power of 
24 times 300 watt peak. So this gives us 7.2 kilowatt peak. And this is smaller than our P max of 8 kilowatt of the inverter. So everything is fine. Criterium number one is fulfilled. Second criterium uh, we have defined. Let's go back. Is the, We said that the maximum current which might occur, ISC, is uh, smaller than the maximum current of the inverter. So let's check this. So the maximum current. Uh, so we have the ISC of our modulus is 11 amperes. So do not take 10 amperes. So do not take uh, not the IMPP because the ISC is, is, is larger. It might occur under uh, specific circumstances in case of any damage that uh, we have uh, short circuit and then we get this uh, this current of 11 amperes and that's the the maximum value we have to consider so what do we have so uh, i max of our pv system is two times 11 amperes so we have two strings so two strings times 11 amperes is 22 amperes so that's the maximum current which might occur and that's smaller than 25 amperes, so everything's fine. You do not need to consider any temperature effects as the uh, temperature coefficient for the current is very, very small. So the uh, increase of the temperature leads to a very small increase of the, of the current, but you can totally neglect this uh, effect. So then the third criterion, maximum voltage. maximum voltage so we have uh, said that the uh, uh, the UOC UOC is 40 volts so again do not take the the UMPP we need the maximum voltage um, and what we now need to consider is that uh, we need to check this on the, not only at 25 degrees Celsius but at minus 10 degrees Celsius so we have to check this at minus 10 degrees celsius so what we need to do is we have to need to check what uh, how to do this calculation for a different temperature than the stc temperature so first we need to know what is the temperature coefficient of our modules temperature coefficient for the for the voltage uh, gamma and that is defined as minus 0.34 percent per Kelvin so per degrees Celsius or Kelvin the voltage will change by minus 0.34 percent per temperature increase or, or decrease so in this case what do we have we have a temperature differ difference of uh, 25 to uh, 10, so we decrease our temperature. So we have a minus 35 Kelvin uh, temperature um, difference, and that gives us a change of the of the voltage. So we get a delta U change of the voltage of uh, our voltage times our temperature coefficient times delta T. And now let's use our value. So delta U is we have 40 volts times minus 0.34% per Kelvin. So keep the minus sign in mind times and then we have minus 35 Kelvin. And just use your calculator. What we get is that is plus 4.76 volts so the voltage will increase under these conditions that we have a temperature of minus 10 degrees celsius and then we have an increase of the voltage and that gives us a uoc at minus 10 degrees celsius of uh, in total 44.76 volts so the voltage has increased due to a lower a module temperature and under this condition the 
maximum voltage of the inverter um, must be fulfilled. So now let's do the check. We have said that we have 12 modules, modules per string. So that gives us a U max of 12 times 44.76 volts. Uh, and that's, if you uh, again use your calculator, gives you a voltage of 537.12 volts. And that is significantly smaller than our maximum voltage of 1000 volts. So again, everything is fine. Criteria number three is fulfilled. Of course, if you do the same calculation uh, without considering this, this temperature, in this case, you won't use uh, 44. Uh, 0.7 volts, but you would use in this case just 40 volts. Then, of course, you would just get 480 volts, and that is also smaller. But this is the criterion you have to check under this te temperature condition. Uh, and if the maximum voltage is smaller than the maximum voltage, the voltage limit of your inverter, everything is fine. And finally, we need to check our MPP voltage. So, going back to our uh, figure. Uh, so we need to check uh, is our MPP within the MPP control range of the inverter under different temperature conditions. So at 25, minus 10, and plus 70 degrees. Of course, it's sufficient to just check criterion number five and six because uh, if these criteriums are criteria are fulfilled, of course, automatically criterion number four is fulfilled. But let's do the uh, all three checks um, uh, step by step. So starting with the MPP, uh, starting with the MPP voltage at plus twenty five degrees Celsius. So we don't have any temperature effects. Uh, what do we get? So we have uh, in this case the UMPP at twenty five degrees Celsius. Um, of our PV system. So what do we have? We have 12 modules in a string. Um, then we have the voltage of 30 volts uh, of our uh, uh, module, and that gives us 30, 360 volts. And that is within our range. We, we defined the range of our inverter. You can see this over there, that's the range we define 250 up to four uh, to 800 volts. Um, so our value of 360 volts lies within, uh, let's write this down, within 250 volts and 800 volts. So everything's fine. Then we need to consider the temperature. So let's do the check voltage at uh, 70 degrees. So we increase the temperature. That gives us a decrease of voltage. Um, so going back to this to this figure, um, you see we are now, we use this blue curve, um, we reduce the voltage and still our uh, MPP must be within this uh, yellow marked MPP control range of the inverter. So Let's do this check uh, quickly. So we have now a delta T, so a temperature difference from 25 to 70 degrees. That is uh, plus uh, 45 degrees Celsius. Um, we have had this uh, gamma, so the temperature coefficient is minus 0.34 degrees Celsius per Kelvin. So that gives us a delta U MPP, so the difference in the uh, MPP of minus 4.59 volts. We have a decrease of the voltage. Um, and then we get an MPP voltage at plus 70 degrees Celsius of just 25.41 volts. And then what is the UMPP of our uh, PV system, of our string? 
we have 12 modules in a row times 25.41 volts and that gives us 304.92 volts and that is again within our range from 250 up to 800 volts so again everything is fine and finally the uh, next check is the MPP voltage at minus 10 degrees. So the calculation is similar to the calculation we have done uh, before. We have a delta T in this case of minus 35 degrees Celsius. Uh, gamma is the same. So what we get is we get a delta U MPP in this case of, in this case, plus uh, 3.57 volts. Um, then we have a UMPP at minus 10 degrees Celsius. So uh, the voltage increases in this case to uh, 33.57 volts. And that gives us a UMPP of our string 12 times 33.57 volts and that gives us 402.84 volts and that's again within this range of 250 up to 800 volts so again everything is fine and the last criterion we want to check is what is happening with the MPP voltage at plus 30 degrees and just 100 watts per square meter irradiance so what we need for this criterion is we need the information what is uh, the UMPP um, under this condition. So um, criterion number seven, uh, we have an irradiance of just 100 watts per square meter. And the question is now, do we have this information? It, normally or typically you don't have this information on a data sheet. So if you have a, different data or information of the PV model you might use this. Um, so in our case the UMPP under this condition at 25 degrees Celsius would be uh, 15 volts and um, yeah now let's let's check if under this condition uh, our MPP voltage is still within the range. So of course first of all we need to consider we have a delta T of plus 5 degrees Celsius so very small irradiance and uh, slightly higher temperature than the STC condition. So we have a delta UMPP in this case of minus 0.255 volts. The voltage is slightly smaller. So that gives us a UMPP under this condition. Um, let's say uh, 100 watts per square meter and we have uh, 30 degrees Celsius. That is just 14.754 volts. And then again, let's let's do the check. Uh, and what you see is we will miss this criterion. So you have the UMPP under this condition is 12 times 14.745 volts, and that is just 100 and. 76.9 volts and that does not fit our our range so in this case the uh, the module MPP um, wouldn't be within this range so we have uh, we don't hit the range but that is not a problem because uh, under these conditions with a very small irradiance so that's a heavy cloudy day uh, pro probably heavy rain um, it, of course you will lose efficiency of the inverter in this case as the as the voltage the mpp voltage is not not within the range but the inverter is uh, of course aware, uh, able to transform the dc power to ac power but under uh worse efficiency conditions um so we'll, you will lose some efficiency but that is not a, a, a criterion you need to to consider hardly uh, if all the other criteria are fulfilled, so number one to number six, everything is fine. That is more important on the one end that you don't damage your inverter, as we've seen here at the top, that these three criteria are fulfilled, the maximum power, the maximum current, and the maximum voltage. Uh, that's important that you don't uh, damage your inverter. 
and uh, on the second part these criteria are fulfilled uh, so that under normal conditions the inverter will operate within the MPP range, everything is fine uh, and you will get the maximum yield from your PV system.